Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship and a special word of welcome for those who are watching on Facebook, on YouTube, and later we'll be walking, watching on the website for the church. I think we have about 168 that watch on, on Facebook. So we continue with our invitation for in-person worship as well as online worship. The calendar is before you. We are starting up as many ministries as we possibly can in the church. And following our service, the first communion class will meet. This is from last spring. And we'll be gathering downstairs. After that, first communion Sunday will be next Sunday. And that will be a beautiful service for our families. We'll be practicing all of the uh, suggestions for social distance and everything will be done. Uh, but give the children an opportunity to have their first communion, which is a wonderful time to celebrate. Also, following our service, we are beginning work towards the National Youth Gathering that was rescheduled, and it will now take place in 2021. And they'll be meeting the library. Preparation for Holy Communion will be meeting downstairs. Tomorrow, there is um, a COVID response team. Now, this group does not go to see people who have COVID. Rather, we're going to look at all the ministries of the church as we seek to digitalize them. And then we have a tech group that we'll be meeting to visit with um, how we can continue to um, provide opportunities for all of our members. We are presently staffing the food shelf for the uh, month of September. If you are interested in helping with the food shelf, let me know afterwards. We have one more um, Tuesday to cover. It's from 5 to 7, and there is an opportunity available there. Wednesday, we have the men's Bible study, and then confirmation orientation will be taking place at 6.30. We'll be meeting downstairs in the basement, and then we will have acolyte training. And then next Sunday, we have Holy Communion, First Communion, and the Blessing of the Harvest. We continue to remember a number of people in our prayers. Shirley Hamrick had her knee removed because of infection and is presently without a knee. So go figure, for six weeks. And then they will be replacing her knee, again, in a major surgery. Glenn Johnson uh, continues to be in our prayers. He is in the home here in Warren. Marlene Owens asked to be kept on the prayers. Uh, she's doing fine. Frederick Sunby, we remember. Don Vansicle had a reoccurrence of cancer. Then we have friends of our parish, Tommy, Emily, Elise, Carol, Landon, David, Jana, Marla, and we remember the family of Florence Johnson. In our service today, we will also be having the Sunday School installation, and we thank Ron Leverington for being our lector and for Katie being our song leader. Do we have any other announcements or prayer requests? With no further announcements, we continue with our opening hymn, Morning is Broken. They invite you to stand. They're easing some of the restrictions. As long as we keep our masks on, we invite you to sing. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning. Praise for them springing, fresh from the word. Sweet the rain's new fall, sunlit from heaven. Like the first two fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, sprung in completeness where God's feet pass. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word is near to you. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated. The first reading comes from Ezekiel 18, 1 through 4 and 25 through 32. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Here now, house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from the righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness that they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why would you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. The response of Psalm is what? Okay. Psalm chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look at you put you, you to shame. Rather, let those who put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Let me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, and you I have trusted all day long. All day. Remember, O oh Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your stead, steadfast love, and for the sake of your goodness, O oh Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead in low, lowly injustice and teach lowly in your way. The second reading comes from Philippians 2, 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any cons consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having 
the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of of, the, of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. We continue our journey through the Gospel of Matthew. And today we have a parable, likely a true story also in that day, of a man who owned a vineyard, probably similar to the operations we have as our farms. He had two sons, one who had good intentions of going out and chose not to, and the other who said no and changed his mind. Please join me as we read our Gospel lesson together from Matthew 21. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I also will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not, but later changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir, but he didn't go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Invite you to be seated. We welcome children of any age to come down for the children's message.
I am so glad to see all of you. How are things going at school? Pretty good, aren't they? You know, it's interesting because you've all grown so tall. I remember many years ago when, when you were a lot shorter. Okay. We have in the church a hymnal. And this hymnal has an interesting history. Most, if not all, of the liturgy comes straight out of the scripture. And um, many people kind of ask and wonder about that because we have different denominations uh, where uh, a lot of the liturgy comes from praise songs or other aspects of just reading God's word. But when we do the liturgy in the church, most of it, if not all of it, has come out of scripture. And I'd like to read in our hymnal, we also have the scripture, Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker, and we belong to him. We are God's people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good, and his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Katie is going to help us, and she's going to hand out some musical instruments. And instead of having a special music song, we're going to make a joyful noise. And if there's anyone here that wants to join us, you're welcome to come on up. Now, Max came up and said, you know, it hasn't been since second grade that I was part of band. So we got our own band here at Our Saviors. All right, you're all, okay, let's all stand up. And for those of you who have an instrument, we'll share, first of all, its sound. So go ahead, Max, you start. Let's hear what you have to say. Good job. Hayden, good job. Ooh, like a cowbell. All right. Tambourine. Another cowbell. Tambourine. There you go. And I got a clapper. All right. What we're going to do is I'm going to read a portion of the scripture. And afterwards, when I lift up my clapper, we're all going to do this at the same time. And we're going to just go for it and rock the church. Okay? Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Ready? Okay, we'll continue on. Know that the Lord is God. He is our maker, and we belong to him, and we are God's people, the sheep of his pastures. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. <laughs> Give thanks to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures for everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the land. Let's give the kids a round of applause, and then we're going to have a bit of a processional as we sing our next hymn. He is 
exalted, the King is exalted on high. We will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted. I will praise His name. The King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord forever. His truth shall be. Grace to you and peace from the God who loves. Amen. Our thoughts for today focus in on our gospel lesson, and it's an interesting journey that we make through the Gospel of Matthew. I begin with um, what took place uh, some time ago. When we lived down in Rushford, there was a lot of hunting of turkeys. Now up here we hunt for deer. But uh, down in Rushford, they hunted for turkeys, and we did also hunt for deer. And I remember talking to one member of the parish, and he was explaining to me what the adventure was like. He said he had taken his rifle, and he went out for a good hunt, and he saw the deer, and he thought he would impress his colleagues and ricochet the bullet off of a wall, a rock wall. So he adjusted his gun and the speed of the bullet and the twist of the bullet and everything and gave it a shot. And I said, I was just waiting, you know, like, okay, you're going to bring the deer on Sunday, right? You're going to show us you actually got it. And he goes, well, didn't quite go that way. I missed the wall. He had great intentions, and they did not come to be. When we look at our gospel lesson, Jesus was challenged about his authority. Why? And even the authority of John. And people kept wanting to pin him down, and he would turn the situation around for them to have a good thing. He talked about a man who had a vineyard. Now, back in that day, if you've been to the Middle East, there are lots of vineyards. And this fellow had quite an operation, and he had two sons. To the one son, he said, you know, it's time to go to work. Got to get out there into the vineyard. And the one son decided that uh, he wasn't going to go. Then he had another son. And he said, it's time to go out in the vineyard. And the son said, sure, Dad, I'll go out. But he never went. One with good intentions, one who changed his mind. So let's look first at the good intentions. We've all had good intentions, and I could ask the kids about this. Do you ever promise your kids that you're going to go to the game? I'm going to be there, and they're ready to play, and they look out in the stands, and oh, something's come up at work, and you didn't quite make it. Or maybe with your spouse, you have good intentions of finishing something, and it it doesn't get done. We all have good intentions. And we procrastinate. We put it off. There's a little poem that's written that's called Tomorrow. It says, 
I will become the best person I can be tomorrow. I will love those around me tomorrow. I will care for those I meet tomorrow. I will do the tasks that I plan to do for this day tomorrow. And it ends up being tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. I think that happens in all of our lives. Good intentions. Then you have the son who told his father that he wasn't going to go. And I'm going to read a portion of scripture on this one because it's, it's very interesting what um, the Jewish people had heard. He told his dad that, um, that he wasn't going to go. Now, with American ears, okay, we would say, well, that's kind of common, you know. You ask the kids to do something. They're usually pretty good, though, but once in a while they say, no, I'm not going to do that. Or maybe it's more common amongst the spouse, you know. Take the garbage out. No, it's your turn, right? That goes down, too. But for the Middle Eastern society, it absolutely shocked and was scandalizing for the disciples because when you were really little, like in Sunday school, and back then it would have probably been in rabbi school, or you went to confirmation, which would have been Jewish school, you learned from Deuteronomy 21, 18 through 21. So parents, listen up. This is, in fact, what a true Jew would follow. If someone has a stubborn or rebellious son who does not obey his father or mother and who does not heed them and the discipline that they give, then his father and mother shall take hold of him and bring him to the elders of the town, to the gate of the city. And they shall say to the elders, this son of ours is stubborn and rebellious, and he does not obey us. And the elders shall take the son and take him out of the city and stone him to death. That is what a true Jew was taught. Now, in our society today, that would be called abuse. You know, if outside of Warren here, over by the sign there, we hold our kids and things went on. But the disciples heard it, and what they heard when Jesus said that that son said no, he would not go, was absolutely scandalous in their thought. But then later, he reflected and changed his mind. Jesus said that the tax collectors and their prostitutes will enter the kingdom of heaven before the Pharisees and the Sadducees, because they have done the will of the Father. We have opportunity in our lives every day to hear the Holy Spirit nudge us and work in our lives to move us forward. Do you ever have a thought that goes through your mind and you think, boy, I should give that person a call, and you have good intentions to do it, and then all of a sudden things get real busy and you forget to do it? The Holy Spirit still nudges us along. Or maybe God has called us to serve in some way, and we're like Jonah, we go running off because we don't want to go to Nineveh. But the Holy Spirit works in our heart and our mind, and we change our minds and say, okay, God, work your plan in and through me. So when we look at this gospel lesson, we hear of two sons. Which one are you? Amen. Flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You moved on the water. 
hands you go to the deep then you coax up the mountains from the valleys of sleep and over the on your wings. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You swept through the desert, you stood with the sand, and you goaded your people with a lie and a land. And when they were blinded with idols and lies, then you spoke through your prophets to open their eyes. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from pleasantness, wind, wind on the sea. invite you to stand. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. This is the time and the service when we receive our gifts. There is an offering plate that is at the back of the church. And we want to thank you for your generous support of the ministry of the church. Throughout this entire time, the work of the church has continued as we serve in our community, as we served in our congregation, and we serve in our world. Let us pray. Generous God, you provide for our every need. Receive our gifts of money, imaginations, and all we have to give. Amen. I invite you to be seated. And today we are installing the leadership of our Sunday school, and as your name is called, I invite you to come forward. We've had a wonderful response from the members of our church for Sunday school. Teaching preschool and kindergarten is Heather Gorosky, so if she'd like to come up. Teaching first and second grade is Katie Jo Marcus. Third and fourth grade, Samantha Hedlund. Fifth grade, Amanda 
Bo and sixth grade Katie Benson. Also substitutes are Julie Dahlman, Donna Miller, Laura Nyblatt, Brenna Olson, Ashley Rainier, and music is Katie Benson and Joanne Peterson. And it's wonderful, even in these days of COVID, we're continuing on in as many ways as we possibly can. And I would invite the teachers to turn and face the altar, and I'd like to share with you a wonderful portion of scripture. St. Paul writes, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but God gives to everyone the ability of particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. And each one of these teachers um, is serving as they care for our children and the wonderful gifts that they share. And you have uh, chosen positions of leadership in our church and are entrusted with the care of our children together with their parents. And as you are, will you be diligent in this specific area of serving as the Lord gives you grace and empowers you? If so, answer by saying, I will with the help of God. You are also examples of faith to act in love and to maintain life in harmony. We give you thanks that you are working with the children of our congregation and we rejoice in the work that God has worked in you. And to the people of God, I ask you, will you support these wonderful teachers and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, answer by saying yes by the help of God. I now declare to you installed Sunday School staff of our Saviors Lutheran Church, and I thank you for the gifts that you share. And as I look out on this group of people here, wonderful gifts that each one of them share, and it is an eternal gift that you are giving to our kids. This is not something that just ends with the Sunday School year, but makes an eternal difference in each one of their lives. Thank you. Invite you to stand as we continue with our prayers and our devotional hymn. Drawn together in the compassion of God. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. In all the world, give your church unity. Inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ. Where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear and pray. Our lives are yours, O oh God. Relieve the suffering of those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. Defend the lives and welfare of children who are abused or neglected, hungry or exploited, bullied or lonely. We especially pray for those who are healing, who are sick, and who are in need of special prayer. Shirley, Glenn, Marlene, Fredris, Don, Tommy, Emily, Elise, Carol, Landon, David, Jana, Marla, and we remember the family of Florence Johnson. Lord, in your mercy. 
Turn this congregation away from our own interests towards the interests of others. Fill us with your compassion and sympathy. Bless ministries of care in our community. Make us into signs of your mercy and justice for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for those who have gone into the kingdom ahead of us, tax collectors and prostitutes, likely and unlikely, obedient and slow to learn. By their witness, teach us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord in life and in death. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power. Send us grace. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. We join in singing our closing hymn, he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. This is the day I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We invite you to visit following our service. And next Sunday, we will have a communion service and our first communion and blessing of the harvest.